We have some new people joining. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I am so glad to have you here for our first ever Veterans Art Appreciation class. Um, if you served, I wanna uh, give it a big appreciation for your service. If you are a loved one of someone who served, I wanna thank you for your service as well. Um, one of the first things I wanna say is thank you to Myovant Sciences and Myriad Genetics for graciously providing us the supplies for this class. We thank you so much and we thank you for rec uh, recognizing how important veterans and their families are. Um, that's, first of all, thank you so much. And then uh, the second thing I wanna say is that this is your time to create, this is your space. This is here, this is a time for you to be yourselves. Hannah, don't worry. We will be giving you lots of instructions. We'll give, be giving you lots of options and different ways that you can take, but this is solely your own and we're gonna be here with you every step of the way. So Hannah, this is the part of the show where I call you up and you're going to go through with us what we need, what we should have, um, anything else we need to know, and basically just what do we need to do to get started? Thank you so much, Alexa, for that lovely introduction. Well, my name is Hannah and I'm gonna be your instructor today. So if you look at the screen, you should be able to see, it, it's actually titled Art Cam. So you should be able to see our project for today. So we're gonna creating this lovely scene of a moon with a bunch of um, trees down here at the bottom. So this is actually a watercolor project. So you guys should have should have received several items, but let me go ahead and go over the things that I did not send you guys. Um, so in case you guys are watching you are from home, you're gonna need um, these items, plus I'll go over um, uh, the watercolors and all that stuff as well. Um, you're gonna need a jar of water or a cup of water. So I have mine right here. Always keep it real close by. Um, I have a napkin. So I use these pretty often. Um, we're also gonna need something to trace the moon. So I'm not gonna make you guys draw a circle from scratch, okay? Um, if you have perhaps a ramekin or a dry cup or a lid of some sort, like I have this little container lid, I'm gonna go ahead and use this to trace around it and use that shape of the circle. So something that looks traceable and round for the moon. Um, you'll also need your paper. So if you had supplies sent to you, sh you should have gotten some mixed media paper. Um, for those of you guys at home listening in, we're using nine by 12 inches mixed media paper. You're also gonna want some watercolors. So I have these right here. Um, you're going to want a pencil, of course, with a good eraser. Um, mine has an okay eraser. I'm probably going to look for my, here we go. I have my little eraser right there. So your pencil and eraser. Oh. Um, you're going to want some watercolor pencils as well. Now, watercolor pencils are very fun. They're some of my most favorite things to use ever. And I have a whole bunch of them, but really you don't need the whole rainbow okay you don't need a whole lot um we're going to be using purples blues grays i decided to use pink in this one but you don't have to use pink if you don't want to um for the moon um down here once we do the trees once we're ready for the trees you'll want various greens for that one so i've got um like this little uh this color right here is like a lighter green. You'll want darker greens, um, browns. You'll want, uh, what else would you want? Probably some blues as well. And you don't have to remember any of those colors, okay? I'm gonna repeat all of this when the time comes. So I'm gonna set those aside. You're gonna want some brushes as well. Now, probably the only really important brush for this one is gonna be our flat brush. So if you got a shipment, if you got some packets, some uh, supplies sent to you, you should have gotten a, a brush that looks flat um, or a brush that is flat, kind of like this one. So we're gonna be painting the entire background using this brush. So have that aside. Some of you guys might have a brush 
that looks a little bit like this one. And this one also is perfectly fine as well. So I know I sent out a, a set that has various different brushes too. As long as it's big, that's the only thing that matters. As long as it's a big flat brush of some kind of shape, you're fine. So something like this, I'll probably be using this one, but this one again is perfectly fine as well. Um, you're also gonna want a pointy brush. Technically it's called a round brush. So this one right here, you should have a similar size. Um, unfortunately, brush sizes are not standardized, okay? Um, but they're around the same size. So this one's an eight. If you have a six, that's perfectly fine. If you have a four or even a two, that's also perfectly fine. Even an eight is perfectly fine too. Um, I think I hit all my bases. I think I got everything. Um, does anybody have any questions before we begin? And Hannah, I did post all of those supplies in the chat too, which can be referenced perfect. at any time. That is perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, yes, so something I also forgot to mention, if you are working on a surface that you don't want to get dirty, you don't want to chance any sort of watercolor on top of it, then I would say maybe put some more paper underneath it. As you can tell, I do not care about my surface, okay? <laughs> um, this painting is not going to be overly messy, it's really not. But in case that matters to you, then just sort of cover it with some extra paper or napkins or newspaper underneath it. Um, I think I've said everything I need to say. I think, I think that's it, we can go ahead and get started. So um, one more time, go ahead and take a picture or a screenshot. Um, just in case you need to reference this photo again. I will be bringing it back out periodically throughout the class. So you don't have to worry about not seeing it again um, throughout this class. Um, but go ahead and take a picture now if you need to. Hey, uh, Hannah, while we're doing Oops. that, while people are taking a picture, we do have a question from one of our participants. I've never heard of watercolor pencils. Do they get dipped in water? That's a great question. Ooh. Okay, so typically I don't dip them in, in water. Typically I will actually scribble. Um, I'll use them the same way that I use color pencils where I color on the dry paper. And then later I'll put the water on top of it and watch the water mix the pigment together. Um, we're gonna be doing a little bit of both today. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of that scribbling where we're gonna draw the trees down here. Um, and then also, we'll also be doing a little bit of tapping of the, the, the wet, like the water, basically tapping to create the, this kind of texture on top of the moon. So it's a little bit of both. Any other questions? Keep them coming, you guys. I know that sometimes I tend to work a little bit quickly. Um, and that's just my brain thinking really fast. Okay, please do not hesitate to interrupt me. It's absolutely okay if you have a question and I'm going a little bit fast, that's okay. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I, I have my paper here and don't worry, I will bring back the, um, the picture. I'm gonna have a question. I'm gonna get my pencil because I wanna be able to trace the moon. That's gonna be the very first thing. Get your tracing object ready, get your pencil ready. And I'm going to pull this so, up a little bit. Yes. Yeah, it looks like you are taking up maybe a bigger amount than last time, I guess, whatever moon size we want. Yeah, it really just depends on you. Why don't I go ahead and bring out the other example that I have too, just to show you that even if you have a smaller tracing object, that is okay too. So with this one, I think I just used the cup for this one, if I remember correctly. Um, it just means you have more space for the sky, that's all. So a, a bigger area out here means you have more space for the sky. However, if you have a bigger moon, it just means you have more space to fill in your moon. That's all. Yeah, very good points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my object and I just, I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of space up here. Um, I wanna make sure that I have a good amount of space on the side here. 
Um, it's pretty important to have a lot of space down here. So as you can see, my hand fits down here, right? So the moon is is situated <laughs> pretty far with up here. I'm playing piggy so with him. I'm gonna go ahead and take my pencil once I have it situated and just start to trace. I'm not gonna press down overly hard, but I'm also not really pressing down lightly either. I'll bring up the example again in a moment, but you can definitely see my pencil marks in the in the uh, the final piece as well. So here's the original. See that you can see the pencil mark pretty finely. Any questions? Can you okay. put that one back up? I hadn't yeah. you have two and I've only taken a picture of one. Yeah, yeah. here's this one. Oh, that's nice. this one's the one that has more blue in it than the last one. And if you need if you need me to bring back the purple one, let me know. I can do that. Sure. Now I'm not sure which one I have. <laughs> you want both? Sure. There you go. You are going to do the blue one, though, right? Correct. I will do the blue one. Now, I want you guys to know also because I I know a lot of a lot of you guys here are are new, so welcome to class. Um, but I like to leave a lot of wiggle room for creativity. I don't really like to leave anything set in stone. Um, I want you guys to be able to express yourselves using whatever colors okay, um, you may want to. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, no, no, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're good, Brandy. Um, I want you guys to be able to use whatever colors you you might want to use. So if you would much rather stay and do blues, maybe even greens in your sky, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I don't want to set anything in stone, right? Um, same thing with the colors within the moon. These little colors that we're going to be um, tapping a little bit later, you don't have to do a purple moon. If you want to do just purely gray or you want to add some blue to it, or I can't think of any colors yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something later. Um, you're more than welcome to do that too. And um, if you have an idea that you think is amazing, shout it out. We would love to hear it. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to start with the watercolors. So I want to grab my handy dandy watercolor set. Let me go ahead and move this aside now this up here okay so what I want to use is this brush right here the larger one the flat one so this one right here the flat one so it's large it's a bigger brush so it's going to be able to cover a wider around a wider range of space on our picture. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna address the outside of the moon first. We're gonna paint the entire background first, starting with this area closest to the moon. We're gonna move out um, and I'm probably not gonna, you know, spin around with my brush like this. I'll show you, it's gonna be more like that. Um, and then later on, then we'll jump to the inside of the moon. So um, let me bring back this example for you. I want you guys to take a look and notice how the color here closest to the moon, it's very light, right? What we're gonna do is paint with water first. Remember we're using watercolors. The more water you use, the, the lighter the color is going to be. The less water you use, the brighter the color is gonna be. More water means that it's lighter. So basically, when we do this, we're gonna add pure water, nothing else, pure water to the outside, and that's gonna act as a cushion, gonna be a cushion so that it's not too dark closest to the moon. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, please let me know. It probably will make more sense once I actually do it. So enough talking. Gonna go ahead and dip my brush into my water. For some of you guys who have the newer brushes, you might have to really tap, tap, tap 
um, because they're going to be new brushes. They're they're usually coated with something that that's a little bit dark, uh, not darker, um, coated with something that keeps the brush stiff. So just tap it to make it less stiff. I noticed one question. Do I, do I need to put something under the media so it doesn't leak through? Um, it shouldn't leak through, honestly, it shouldn't leak through. But if you want to protect the surface around it, you're more than welcome to put um, perhaps more paper um, or newspaper or, or what else? Um, parchment paper, that works too, um, just to protect your surface from any paint. But it shouldn't leak through the paper or anything. Yeah, good question. So I have my water and I don't exactly want it to drip, right? But there's still a lot of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and go right back here and let's add this cushion of water around the outside of our circle. You're probably gonna have to keep on refilling and that's perfectly fine. Keep refilling. I have a nice little cushion. Now, if you accidentally get inside of the moon, then that's perfectly fine as well. You have to remember we're using watercolor. So those little bits of um, uh, those variations where the water sort of gets into these little places, um, those are really nice to look at. So it's a nice, I hope you guys can see some of that sheen there. It's just the cushion. And I would actually advise you guys to take some more and make the cushion a little bit wider. I'm going to spread this out a little bit further. Spread it out, still trying to make a ring outside of my moon. Spreading it a little further. That cushion is going to protect the closest areas from really dark colors. Any questions? You definitely want to see that sheen there. Like it shouldn't be um, enough to, to, to drip off of your paper, but it should at least have a nice sheen like that. And if it does, if it is a little too much and it does kind of drip off your paper when you move it, then you can always scooch it aside. Just move it around move those little drips to other spots where it can be absorbed by the paper. Now, before it dries too quickly, I wanna go ahead and teach you guys the next step. So most of you should have the same watercolor set. As you can see, mine is very loved. I use it all the time. I set it right here. You should see two types of blues. Um, I have more of like a, I don't know, like a, a teal blue, a tealish blue, and a much darker blue right over here. It's really just a matter of preference, honestly. Now, if I refer to the original picture, I chose the, the really bright teal-ish blue, like the more aqua blue. That's what you see around here. But if you like the other one, you're more than welcome to use the other one instead. I'm gonna take more water, because I want more water. We're using watercolors, let's remember that. I'm gonna take my blue of choice. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this paint. It's not completely saturated with paint, but there's a good amount there. Now I'm gonna start on the outskirts, further away from my moon and I'm gonna watch the the paint spread I just I absolutely love seeing the the way the water drags the color just drags it towards the moon see that these little parts right here I love looking at that we love watching stuff like that Now, if I were to go back to the original picture, you can see that a very light bit of color does in fact touch the moon. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to take my dirty brush here and I'm going to go ahead and just dip a little bit into the water. Because remember how I said the water dilutes the color, the water makes the colors lighter. Well, we just dipped some more water onto our brush. So I have a very light bit of color that I can then apply much closer to the moon. In fact, I'm going right up to the edge there. That corner here, it's just sort of skirting the edge. And Hannah, is In it progress. okay if I accidentally- Is it okay if I accidentally- Ooh, uh -huh. hang on a sec. Hannah, I accidentally muted you. I'm sorry, but let me ask my question real quick. Um, if I accidentally get color on my moon, will everything turn out okay? Uh, Hannah, I accidentally muted you. Can you unmute? I sent you an unmute thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yay. All right, so in fact, I'm gonna bring out this one. And I did get a little bit of the, the paint inside of the moon, but you honestly can't even tell because I was able to go over it with um, some other colors later. So that edge, those edges, edges right there, I was that able to go over that. It actually makes it look more moon-like. So it turned out just mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, exactly. So we will address that. Oh, cool. Those Thanks. are really good questions. Really good question. So before it gets too dry, around here, um, we can go ahead and start to paint this area. Now this area, it's gonna be much darker because as you can see, the further out that you get away from the moon, the darker it is. Same thing up here. We still have a very distinct ring around the moon. Um, and I am still going to spread the same color I'm still going to spread it much further out. Even though you see a ring here, we're still going to spread this color much further out. So I'm going to dip my brush into my water again, because of course we're using watercolor. We're still diluting our, our paints. I'm going to go right back into the same blue that I used. I'm going to grab some more paint. And again, I don't want it to get too dry. We're gonna start underneath here. And look how beautiful that color is. We're gonna start to wrap around. We are very much going to see our brush strokes and that's a beautiful thing. Now I need to refill. So I'm gonna refill with my water and with my paint. I feel like that's important. It's important to refill with both your water and your paint because that water really helps us to blend things. Now, again, you are gonna be able to see your brush strokes very well, but we're going to smooth them out in a moment here. That's very brush strokey, right? I'm sure that's a technical term somewhere. Um, I'm going to dip my brush into my water again, because my water is the ultimate blender. So I got some water. I didn't rinse my brush, but I have some, uh, some water on there. And I'm gonna go right on top of my brush strokes and I'm gonna try to do these wider brush strokes. I know that it's, it's really tempting to lift up your brush, but as best as you can, try to really stretch them, try to really make them rounder. Um, I'm using my, my elbow to kind of move things around, but whatever way works for you, I want you to do that. Hey, Hannah, I had to uh -huh. take the dog out. Did you choose a different, a new color or is this all the same color? It's all the same color. Okay. Yeah. It's all the same blue. Now I still have, I still see my brush strokes pretty clearly up there. And that's totally fine because we're gonna move on to a different color this time. Um, you, This is your chance to choose a different blue perhaps, or perhaps choose uh, some purple to put on top of that if that's what you want. Um, what else? Um, I've never seen anyone use any green, but that might be pretty cool um, to see. 
Um, what else? If you can think of anything else, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, with this one, I want to say I used the purple, the, the one of the darker purples. I'm pretty sure that's what I use. I use one of the darker purples and I also use the other blue, just a little splash of the other blue. But you don't have to memorize that, okay? Um, what we're going to do now is move on to, I'm not going to rinse my brush. I am going to grab more water and choose one of my purples. I'm pretty sure it was this purple, the one that's next to the, uh, the, the blue we just used. I'm gonna grab some of that. Just remember that this area is supposed to be darker. It's the area that's further away from our moon. I'm gonna start outside of my, of my ring here. And I'm going to start to overlap it. This is where that mixing begins. Try and do those wider brush strokes, that mixing, that overlapping. Anytime I refill my paint, I'm always going to grab both the water and the purple. So I got my water, got my purple. You can do more overlapping than this if you want. Like this, you see how I put that purple right on top of that ring right there, moving it slowly. So Hannah, you have three colors now, right? I have two colors. Oh. <laughs> yep, I only oh. used this blue right here and oh. I used this purple. This this, uh, this deeper color that you see mm -hmm. here, that's what happens when you overlap that blue with the purple. Right. So they're, they're, they're mixing, they're mixing right there on the, on the paper. Science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I feel like this could be blended a little bit better. Remember how I said your water is gonna be the ultimate blender? Well, that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to take some water. And you guys, your particular piece may not be like this. You really have to look at it. But if you feel like it can be blended some more, then take some water and really stretch that water up and down, going over both sides of the colors. And if, if stretching it leads you into moving up to the corners, then so be it. I can always take a little more water, can always move that color around, doing my best to, to make these longer brush strokes. Now, it's never going to be completely, um, what's the word, uh, paint brush stroke free. It's never going to be completely uh, like a gradient, but that's a good thing, I think because that shows your hand. It really lets us get a, a glimpse into the artist's mind, that's you. <laughs> so I'm gonna stretch it up. Again, I just have water on my paintbrush. I just refilled with water and I am going over these areas, doing my best to blend. Now, the next step really just depends on you and where you're at with your picture. Um, if you feel like this area closest to your moon is blended enough, then you're more than welcome to refill with your water and with your color of choice. So either purple or blue and start to fill in the corners here. So I got the corner here and this little bit of corner right there. So I'm actually gonna use my purple because that's what the original has right there. Now, because those areas are so tiny, I'm just gonna tap a little bit of this color on my brush. Not a lot. Swipe it on top, all in the corner, and then jump to the, the smaller corner like that. I just love seeing everything blend. What I love about watercolors. 
in a moment will. Hmm? Is it important when you're in the corners to keep that circular motion? Yes, that's a really good question. I'm I'm still moving along with that circular motion. Yes, I'm glad you you asked that. Go. I think I'm liking this one more than I like the original. <laughs> funny how that happens. I tend to like my second or even third go around better. Y'all have questions? Everybody's so intent. It's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I went down too far. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, that's the next step. We're going to move further down and complete this area down here. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, you're, you're good. <laughs> and in fact, I probably will want to do that in the next few seconds because I don't want it to dry too much. I guess that's one thing about watercolors is that sometimes you have to pay attention to your timing a little bit. But I think the, I think the same is, is true with um, acrylic paints too, though. So down here, um, I went all the way to the bottom with that same purple. So I'm going to go ahead and again, take my water and then take my purple. And then continue on down here. I'm moving in the same direction as all of my other brush strokes, more, more of that circular motion. Need to refill a bit, put that there. <clears throat> I think the corners are probably the most tricky if you even wanna call it that. Um, I am constantly looking uh, a little bit further away from my picture. And I do that because I wanna take a look at my picture as a whole. Um, our pictures look different um, when we're really close to them compared to where, when we're further away. We get to see the bigger picture, so we get to see more of the picture. Um, and I know that, that probably maybe doesn't make quite too much sense, but trust me, <laughs> it up a little bit <laughs> and you'll be able to see it in a different light. Well, I'm loving it so far. Good. Well, that makes me happy. And again, you can still see your brush strokes very clearly, especially down here. And we want some of that. We want to be able to, um, to see the hand that created it. I love the individuality. Yes, exactly. That's what it is. Now, moving back to the original, ta-da. Um, I think I did put a little bit of a splash of that darker blue down here. Um, it's watered down though. So I, I had a good amount of water on my brush whenever I did that. If you want a splash of something different, perhaps that green that I mentioned, um, I know that there's like a, a turquoise right over here. I think it's a turquoise. Um, or there's even a really bright magenta right over here. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome to do one of those colors too. Um, so I can take my color and I am going to rinse it this time. It doesn't really take much to rinse it, honestly. Mm -hmm. But again, take some water. And then take your color of choice. So for me, it's going to be that other blue, the one that we haven't used yet. Take some of that, and I just want a little splash. I probably need a little bit more water on my brush, actually. There we go. And let's just kind of put it down here. Again, I'm using those same circular brush strokes. It's darkening up my purple. Does anyone want to see what it would look like with another color on top? I'm happy to be a guinea pig, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. 
but as you can see, it just darkened it up a little bit. There we have it. I think I'm, think I'm good. I think I'm good with this color. I like it. I like the way the brightness of the moon. Yeah. Yeah, it really does look like it's, it's just like a bright hole right there in the middle of the picture. We will be um, painting or starting to paint the inside of the moon in a moment here. So you can actually, when, once you're finished with the, the background, you can go ahead and rinse your brush and just set it aside. Because we'll be moving on to um, the pointy brush, the round brush. Do you guys have questions? I always get nervous when no one has questions. <laughs> Please feel free. Just throw them out there. <laughs> okay, uh, I have I have a question. Yeah, and this could is more when we're done. But like I always find when we do the um, watercolor, it's beautiful, and then like the paper is super wavy. Mm. I, other than like pressing it flat between glass, I is there anything to do about that? Um, sometimes um, if you if we had started before, I'm. I'm we could have um, maybe had, if you have any um, what is it? painter's tape, like the blue painter's oh, tape, yeah. just okay. tape it. But even then that doesn't completely eliminate it from moving. It helps a little bit, but it doesn't completely eliminate that. Um, I would say using actual like heavy watercolor paper will be your best bet um, to have it completely flat. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, but those are usually expensive, so. yeah. It yeah. offers a little flair to it, you know. It it does. A little character. <laughs> I yeah. I have I've done this before where I do set it under heavy yeah. books for yeah. like yeah. two weeks and it does help. So and that's what I do. Put it under something yeah. heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks minimum. <laughs> Guys, I cannot wait to see what it looks like. Um, we're making great progress, so we're doing really good. Um, so I'll go ahead and start explaining the moon again. Um, let me go ahead and bring the original out. I'm going to move this aside. So I'm going to zoom in on the original picture as well, so you guys can see it. Okay, so the moon, it's mostly gray right? Um, mostly gray with um, a little bit of extra color. Now that extra bit of color was my own artistic flair, so to speak. I wanted to add purple. I wanted to add darker bits of, of gray. Pink, I added pink to it. So I really want you guys to think about what colors you want your moon to be. If you want it to be just gray, that's absolutely fine. That's your choice to do. And I am going to show you guys um, how to water down your black paint so that it is um, very much gray. Uh, and really, this that step will apply to, to any of your colors as well. So you can choose what colors that you want ahead of time. What we're going to do first is give it a light little spattering of uh, a light color. So in this case, gray. And then I'll also go over it with a light um, purple in some spots. So just to give you guys a, a heads up. But again, choose what colors that you want. You have uh, 16 colors to choose from. So if you want a red moon, you can do a red moon. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, later on, we will use the watercolor pencils to create more of the, the divots. These are more of the, the tiny craters that if, if you were to take a telescope, you'd be able to see the tiny little craters on top of it. That's what the watercolor pencil is for. And then we'll also um, later on use the watercolor pencils for the, uh, the trees as well. Since the moon is made of cheese, yellow or orange, ooh, yellow. <laughs> so obviously we, it's cheese. <laughs> we were talking about the gray. Are we using the brushes to do that, right? 
Yes, we are. And I will show you how to do that. Oh. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll be using this brush right here, the, the pointy brush. Okay. Yeah, we'll use the, the pointy brush. And actually, I think your sets should have come with one of these brushes. So um, I don't know what it looks like. I, I lost mine a long time ago, but should be a pointy brush. So again, just like how we put a cushion of water on the outside of our moon, we're also going to put a cushion of water on the inside of the moon as well. So let me show you Hannah, how to do that. Yes. The one that came does not look so pointy. <laughs> I mean, I have like one that looks uh, like like um this. It looks, I don't know if you can see my screen. Looking, I have some of these that are like pointy brushes, but they're like pretty messy and not pointy. Oh, Oh, I see. So the white one, is that the one that came with your set? Yeah. You know, I've seen that more lately, actually. It should be more pointy. It's sloppy. It? Yeah, it's, it's hard yeah, to do. That's okay. okay. For for this particular um, thing that we're going to do, that's totally fine. You can use that. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to just stick with the green one, you can just stick with the green one. Yeah, it's just weird. I have several of these, and I'm like, these are useless to me. <laughs> but... <laughs> Probably um, I just don't know better. I should probably think of a, a project to use them for. But yeah, you're you're right. Um, a brush again. Can you show us the brush you're using? Because pointy oh. doesn't come across. Oh, oh, it, it may be uh, because of Brandy's issue where it doesn't uh, mm, yeah. quite translate as pointy, just because of the and the what brand, you can do is you can dip it in water and you can twist it a mm -hmm. little bit that will make it pointier sometimes the brushes when they arrive they can get out of shape or like hannah said they can be really stiff so that can also mm -hmm. help as well so usually what i do in those instances is i'll dip it in the water and then twirl it on the cup like that so dip it and twirl it a bit more on the cup just to kind of straighten it out it's always so interesting to me how watercolor or water it can look terrible, but it doesn't affect the watercolor. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and let's start to coat just a section of our moon. I'm just going to pick maybe this, this area right here. That's really what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go section to section, little by little. So I just have, I wanna move this a bit so you can see how much water I've put on there. Once again, it's not enough to really drip down, but it's not a small amount either. I can still kind of manipulate it. And if you do happen to have the, some of those drips and you can always spread it a little bit further. You can and you're going all the way up to the edge. Yeah, I am going to go ahead and go up to the edge so I can show you what it looks like. So, and actually, I, I accidentally went over the edge and I'll show you how to address that too. So, I'm going to take my black paint. Now, I have all this space, and you guys should have plenty of space over here. Um, hopefully, you got your space, this area will be more clean than mine. <laughs> In fact, if it's not clean, you can always take a little napkin and wipe it with a little bit of water. This is a very well-loved set, as you can tell. There we go. Okay, should be a clean area. So I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna tap a little bit of black paint, tiny bit, and take it to this area. The idea is to dilute it quite a lot so that it looks gray. Before that water? Put, uh -huh. Before putting any, um, any white in it, huh? You got it, you got it. Before putting any white, we're still gonna dilute it with the water. Now, what you can do, since you have this bit of white paint, you can grab some white paint. And actually, I'm grabbing quite a bit of white paint. Go ahead and mix that in. 
Go ahead and mix that white paint in with your diluted black paint. When you're ready, when it looks very watery like that, very watered down, then you can go over to your moon and tap the paint. I'm using the point to tap the paint and I'm watching the colors flow, leaving some areas of the white paint. I can even take it right up to the edge there, spread it a little bit. Now, the reason I have you guys doing it in patches, smaller patches, is because I don't want to overwhelm the paper um, with, with water. Because as we're working, the part that we're working on is going to be wet, but everything else is going to be drying if I'd had you do that. Um, we just want to work in smaller bits at a time. That way we don't crumple the paper up too much. So once you're finished tapping your, your gray color in there, watching the colors move around, which is what I love to do, you can go back and you can even add more of that gray. Make one or two spots really gray. And again, they don't have to be the same areas that I'm doing. You can get your, get your own or have your own little bits of creative freedom there. Tap where you wanna tap. When you're mo ready to move on to the next, next patch, take your clean water and make your next little patch of, of watered area. You can even overlap what you just did, just a little bit. See how I'm overlapping that spot right there? Taking just plain old water right now going right up to the edge. Got my next patch right there. Now I probably need to make a little bit more of this color because I didn't make enough the first time around. And that may be you. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the steps. Let's remove that, there you go. Repeat the steps. So I'm gonna take my water. I'm going to set my water onto my little space right here on the lid. Going back to refill with more water. Reapply that water there. I'm going to Mine grab mm -hmm. bubble bubbles. <laughs> now I grabbed probably a little bit too much black paint, but that's probably okay. It's very diluted, so that's all right. That's what I did, and I'm finding it very hard. To, I've now on my third partition because it's just so dark you can always um take that napkin and wipe it up with the napkin so like okay. that <laughs> yeah and you don't even need to wipe all of it away you can just wipe some and then add water to that add water to the remaining spot hmm okay yeah Whoa. and then once again Gonna rinse my brush and then gonna go in and add some of that white paint, make it gray. Now you you can also be doing the same thing with uh, purple or with blue, just or or yellow, like what Brandy said. If you want to make it cheese, do the exact <laughs> same thing, but with your color of choice. Now I'm gonna go back to my little patch here, my wet patch, before it becomes too dry. Oh, look at Mine that. Dry. Yeah, you can you can always reapply <laughs> it. <laughs> I just love watching the colors move around like that. All I'm doing is just tapping and it's creating those those craters. So I love watercolor. So like watching it move. You can even go right up to the edge there. My, my, every single time I create a moon on a painting, it always turns out different. So yeah. I always find different ways to make, make the craters. Love doing stuff like this. 
Now, what I did do um, in this one, actually in both of them, I, I did spread the paint, the, the gray paint a little bit further rather than making a patch of, of plain water every single time because I get impatient and that's just how I paint. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you that you can always tap a little bit of water, spread a little bit of gray paint in there. Not too much, just, you know, a little bit. Again, I'm using the water to dilute it. This is just if you wanna do that. Now I wanna show you what it looks like um, if you were to add like um, some blue craters on top, because that is what I did with this one. Well, I didn't do blue, I actually did purple. I did a purple, a couple of purple craters in here. So that's in addition to the gray. So again, you can use any color you want with the alternate picture that I created. I did blue craters. So you can see what that looks like right there. Actually, I also did purple as well. So I did purple and gray and blue. This is where I really encourage you guys to, um, to do what you wanna do. Follow your heart, if you will. I am going to rinse my brush before I dip into any other color. Still working while it's wet, so. Don't want to, don't want to talk your ear off too much. Speaking of follow your heart, I'm finding my my water colors are following the ridges created. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we can we can actually go over the 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 edges too, just to kind of clean them up. Okay. Yeah, so we can do that. So I'm taking just a little bit of purple. I'm gonna move this up. around so we can share. Just a teensy little bit, like you can barely see it on the on the brush, hmm. and just tap it. Tap it the same way you tapped all of the the gray. Pick your spots. This makes me so happy. I have plenty of spaces that go over the edge here, so it's plenty to uh, <laughs> to show you how to fix. Now I'm probably just gonna make maybe two more little patches. We've got one right here, and we're all just working on our own at our own pace at this point. Everybody's work is gonna look a little bit different. But the process is the same. So do your little patches with your, your water. Tap a little gray, tap a little bit of, of whatever other color you want. I am gonna go off the rails a little bit and use this little bit of teal because I'm just itching to see what it looks like. especially with that purple. I actually love the way this looks with the purple. Maybe it's not the moon. Maybe it's a different planet. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we're maybe we're on a different planet right yeah. now. <laughs> looking up at their moon. Yep. That's that's what I choose to believe right now. And again, I'm just tapping this color into my purple because I'm really curious to see what that looks like. And I'm loving it. Now, if you find that some of your taps look a little bit too much like taps, like you can see the shape of the brush very clearly, then you can always take just your water. So I have a clean brush here and tap plain water on top of those areas, just to blur them. So it's blurring them. We can yeah. make the sea of tranquility, which is on yeah. the real moon, but. 
the sea of tranquility. Still going along the edge there. I messed up bad. Uh oh. How can I help? Oh no, it's just that um the moon is pink, very dark pink instead of gray. I don't know how it happened. I tried to yeah. put in the little purple and it went too far. <laughs> Interesting. Went too so, we recently have a pink pink moon. They called it something, right? Yeah, the blood moon. I There's blood blood yeah, moon. I think they There's did different yeah. colors that the moon is, so it works. If you oh, want Marcy. More like an Oreo cookie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cookie monsters, cookie monster around. Um, <laughs> there's no I, way to lighten it like that anymore you know it might be possible marcy to take a, a clean napkin and i'll have to see how it looks on mine but my my initial thought is that you could maybe go with the clean napkin and tap what's really wet first tap a little bit off that way it takes the pigment off um I feel like you could probably go in there with a slightly wet napkin, just with, with clean water, clean-ish water. I feel like maybe you could take some of that off. Yeah, if you look at mine, tap, tap some of it off and it lifts the paint off. Yeah. But it is a slower process though, but I do think it's possible. Well, it'll help to lighten it anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll help to lighten it. And since you have a very heavy tint of, of pink, I do think that if you go over it, um, maybe, maybe when you're ready, okay, when you're done tapping some of that color off, um, mm -hmm. you could balance it, turn it into a purple moon, balance it with more gray or perhaps some blue, because that blue is gonna, is gonna make purple. Can you see the disaster? Oh, I, I see it. I like it, Marcy. Um, but I do think that if you were to balance it with some blue, it would help you a lot. Yeah, I'll put some blue in. Yeah, because the, the blue plus purple is, or I'm sorry, the, the blue plus pink is going to create purple. Does anyone else want me to take a look at theirs? I, is, look at those spaces by simply not painting that area. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Sure. Did you, do you have the white spaces by simply not painting into those areas? Yes, correct. So um, some of these spots, um, let me show you like up here, for example, right. um, the whenever I initially put the the patches of water, um, that's where the water end and ends. You can see that the the gray just didn't spread to that spot because that's not where the water landed when I initially put that patch of water. So it created that little edge right there. Yeah, that looks so, yes. nice. It makes it look even more translucent. More trans. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, it, 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 and honestly, that was a happy accident, <laughs> just to be completely honest. So because I, I can't, because you can't really see all of the, the patches that you, that you don't reach with the water, if that makes sense. But I do see the otter in that, in that part of the, <laughs> you Have see you the eye, a little otter. <laughs> I want to see the otter. <laughs> You see the otter? I want to see the otter. Is it like I see right the over otter? Here? Yeah, you see the otter? There's the little nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I, I don't see it yet, but I'm gonna keep looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see an otter yet, but I want to. <laughs> okay. But someone else Love saw it. it. Did someone else see the otter other than me? <laughs> I I saw it. Okay, thank you. Nice. It's the dark nice. purple. Yeah, it is, is. It, is it the dark yeah, purple face in the middle? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. I see the uh, face. Yep, yeah, I see it's a little it. otter yeah. floating in the water. It's so cute. 
now I wonder <laughs> how many other uh, faces and things we can see in other people's moons. <laughs> The, I the feel otter like on the moon. The otter on the moon. Yeah, the otter on the moon. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so if you guys want to clean up your edges a little bit, here's how you do that. So you're gonna take the same brush, and first thing you want to try, if you can, is to see if you can take just the plain old water and spread that color if you can because sometimes the water will lift the color off of the paper so having that clean water spread it around and i'll probably keep on adding more of that clean water just to go around the edge even if it, that means going off of the edge and there you have it there it does clean it up and now I can take this water and just kind of tap inside the moon just to kind of clean up those edges. But the idea is to get the water to lift up off the painting. Now what else you can do is you can take, again, some very, very diluted color, whether that be uh, your gray or whether that be like a purple or blue, whatever you're using, very diluted. So I have a lot of water. You can go over the edge by pointing at it, point at it, and then that's how you spread the color. So if you want to do that, you can certainly do that. Now, I think I'm going to keep all these lines there because I, I really like that. Now, the very last thing we're going to do with our moon is to uh, add some of the watercolor pencils to it. So let me revert back to our original painting here. Ta-da! So we still have all of these tiny little craters to create so these little these little dots that you see so that those little dots are created using our watercolor pencils so you guys will get to uh see what that's like so choose your colors for the dots you can use black you can use gray um, I think you guys have a more sophisticated set than what I have, but I still have the gray. Um, let's see, in my original picture, I chose to do pink craters. Um, whatever you want to do is totally fine. Let's see, so I have, I got a blue. Again, this is where you guys will have that creative freedom. Oh, look, I have another blue. And I do two. Then I have a purple here. What else can I do? I solved my dilemma. Oh, you did? What'd you do? I put um, around the edge of the moon, I put a yellow so that it doesn't bright. It's not so pink. Oh, so I added a bit of yellow. Yeah. And then I when can't I wait to see what that looks like. Should be all right when I put the craters. Cool. Anyways, so, not as good as you. So with this part, whoops, I'm dropping my pencils. Okay. So what do I do now? Get some color pencils. All right, guys. So you can start with any one of your colors. It really does not matter which one you start with. Um, I want to grab some of my water because I want to, to re-wet some of these areas just by tapping a little bit of water on top of it. It's just plain water. So maybe I'll start right over here. I don't want to tap too much because I don't want to lift the color off, but you can use any of your colors Take your watercolor pencils and tap on top of the wet spots. And you'll be able to see that not only will you get a really dark 
um, area of color, but the water will also help it to spread. Tap, tap, tap. See that? The water also helps it to spread. You can, you can move on to different colors if you want. I'm tapping a little bit of blue. I'm honestly, just to give you guys a little forewarning, I'm gonna go crazy with these taps. Now, a lot of these craters are concentrations of color um, because this is where in my head, I imagine the meteors that crashed into it, they're probably smaller meteors. They create smaller craters, they're darker. That's just what I imagine happened. Anytime you wanna add some color to a specific spot, tap it with your plain water. And then you can add your color to it. So it's very wet, lots of water right there, lots of little taps. You can have your taps all together or you can spread them out a little bit more. It's 100% up to you. I absolutely love just watching the color move around and spread. We're, we're putting the water down first, right? Mm -hmm. and, and yep. I must you got have it. Water because it's not dispersing. It's not dispersing, huh? I'm probably um, not. Water. Mine's, mine's not either. So now I'm trying to put water on top and it's interesting. Yeah, it looks like chicken pox. Interesting. It's not chicken pox. <laughs> try, yeah. yeah, maybe try putting a little more water on it. I think that's the problem. Is that what it is? I think so. I didn't put enough water. It's interesting how I can't fix the dots now. Like, it doesn't matter how much water I can rub around. It's right. like, they're uh, like, nope. They're dots. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty common with uh, oh. watercolor pencils. Um, if you were to use it, like put it directly on water, um, it does make it permanent. Um, mm. where, whereas if you were to do the opposite, so maybe color it dry first, um, it's not as permanent. And I know it's kind of confusing, but huh. that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Is it dispersing or not dispersing for anyone else? I'm getting a lot of dots and not a lot of mm -hmm. dispersing. Huh. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do in that case. I wonder now if in those no. instances, maybe... Let me test it on mine first, okay? We're finding a little water on top of the dots is helping. Okay, good. Because I, I was a wondering ton of water, and it didn't, and I did a redo, and it's still dots. I, like, are these really watercolor pencils? <laughs> they should. Huh. They should be, but let me know if they're not. I think part of the problem is that, at least with mine, is that my 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 paper is too saturated with water. Yeah, that dotting, you know, adding the dots of water, mm -hmm. it didn't, didn't allow the tap first. Oh, okay. Huh. I think that's it. Yeah. That's so odd. They were advertised as watercolor pencils, so that's mm -hmm. really odd to me. I want to put a water soluble. Hannah, is there a way that you can add some of that with just the watercolor set? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so if you happen to have a smaller brush, then you can use the smaller brush. But if not, that's okay. Um, you can absolutely use the same brush that you've been using. Um, just not really pressed down as hard. And actually, I just lost my brush. Silly me. Um, okay. Oh, it's been in my water this whole time. Okay. So 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Story of my life. Okay. It keeps you from drinking it, though. It does. It really <laughs> does. <laughs> I have stories about that. Anyway. <laughs> So in those instances, then I would say if you were to wet your little, these little patches, just the same way you've been doing before, wet these little areas again, I have a good concentration of water in a small spot, and then go to your color of choice and we're gonna pick up a highly pigmented amount of color. So less water, more paint. As you can see, I'm really scraping the paint in there. So I got a lot of a lot of color there. And then tap as as tiny as you can, as small as you can. You're still gonna see a little bit of a, a spread of water. But at least if you were to tap very, very tiny, as small as you can, you'll get those tiny taps. So I can go in there with purple as well. It's a higher concentration of my colors. Tiny taps. Hmm. Well, I wonder, now I'm wondering how it's going to work when we put the trees in. Sure hope the, <laughs> the color spreads. <laughs> I, I think if the paper is dry, drier, it will spread more. Okay. I, I think it's just there was too much water for mine, at least. For yours, yeah. I guess, I guess we'll see. Mine now looks like a mooded. Green mold. <laughs> mold. <laughs> it's a mold. <laughs> I can't wait to see them all, though. <laughs> so I'll give you guys another few minutes or another moment for that. Um, you could, you know, theoretically keep on working for the moon on the moon for another like hour or two you know as much as you want to work on it really but i do want to jump down in a few minutes to the bottom and sort of start to uh, put the trees in there yes and also i like to point out that uh, you can always come back to the recording we usually have it up the next day and if you just want to put a pause on your moon or maybe try something different, or even if you want to recreate the project or try a different color scheme, we encourage you to do that. Hannah, I think we sent out mm -hmm. plenty of watercolor paper and stuff. So mm -hmm. feel yeah. free to experiment and uh, just come back to the recording. Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. yeah, you just have plenty of paper. So you're more than welcome to do as many of this project as you want. So I do want to jump on down to the bottom. Now, if, you know, unfortunately the watercolor pencils that you guys were sent, if they don't work as watercolors, as advertised, um, <laughs> <laughs> then we will go ahead and create the trees using our regular watercolor set. So we will still have watercolor trees down there. So um, I want to show you the trees again. Now, I mentioned earlier that the second time that I do a project is usually my favorite or one of my favorites um, because my trees are looking a little sparse, right? I definitely should have added a little bit more of the uh, foliage in the trees. So keep that in mind. I will show you guys how to draw the trees. In fact, the, the method with which I drew the trees is the same. Um, I just have more fluff in one of them, that's all. So there are various different types of greens, um, but I also use a gray as well. So a gray, um, I think I use a brown, 
at least in the the other picture the alternate picture i did use a brown um i want you guys to pick through your set and find all of the greens and grays that you can find and mine has quite a few i also want you guys to find um a navy blue or some sort of dark blue, just the darkest blue that you have. In blue in here somewhere. You can also use black as well if none of your other colors are very dark. So, so greens and, and find browns it. and mm -hmm. greens, green, browns, okay. blues and grays, greens, blues, grays, Thank you. greens, browns, blues, grays. So again, I am hoping that the watercolors work like they're supposed to, or the watercolor pencils work like they're supposed to. If not, then we'll pivot and we'll use our regular watercolors. Now, I want to draw the, uh, what is it, the, the tree trunk first. So it's going to be a line. It's really just gonna be a line that's sticking up from the bottom of the painting. So my trees are various sizes. And actually, I'm just going to close this and put this over here so you guys can sort of look at some of these trees. Try to divide it as best as I can. OK. So I have my, my colors hanging off to the side here. Now what I'm gonna do is draw my, my tree trunks first. So I'm gonna draw several and I am gonna have some space in between them. At least at first I am. So I can start with the easiest, just the ones that are down here. And I'm gonna use these as if they are colored pencils, just regular colored pencils. So some of them are gonna be a little bit taller. There we go. Some of them are gonna be a little bit shorter. The is that ones gray that or are, brown? This is gray. Okay. Yeah, just gray. Cause I, I wanted to use a neutral color before I do anything. Um, I was thinking of a fisheye view whenever I created these trees. So these on the side here, they're sort of angled inward, but I'm gonna make that optional. If you don't wanna angle them, you don't have to angle them. Okay, so just on the side here, they're angled. I'm just drawing the stems, that's all. These are all sticking up. And actually I'm pressing down hard whenever I do these. I'm pressing down hard and I'm also widening the trunk a little bit. So I can go back over them, widen them up a little bit. That way it makes it a little bit easier to see as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use several um, colors. I'm gonna choose one of my greens. I can start off with the darkest green and then just kind of go from there. So we will be adding water to these after? Yes, yes we okay. will. Okay. We will. Now I'm thinking that we'll see if, if they're mixing well enough for you guys, um, then let me know and we can continue as is. Um, I'm thinking that we'll, I'll show you guys how to draw one of the trees. So just do one of the trees and then we'll add the water on top of that. And I want you guys to let me know if it's working for you, if it's actually blending. 
Um, so I'll pick a, in a, a tree that's kind of off to the side that you don't really see very much. Maybe this one right here, you can't really see it that well. So that might be a good thing in this case when we're just testing these things out. So in order to draw the trees, I wanna make note of the originals. Sorry, I almost <laughs> kicked my cat here. I didn't realize he was behind me. <laughs> um, okay, so they're gonna be pointy at the top here. So I'm gonna start with that point. I'm gonna start to draw it, draw my little, my little tree, what do you call them? They're not leaves, they're like the branches, I guess. Pressing down hard, drawing them going outward down and outward. I am filling them in as I move along. I'm going to zoom in because I really want you guys to see this part. Pressing down hard, I'm, I'm pretty much scribbling these in. If you've taken more than one class with me, you will know that I love scribbling. It's one of my favorite things to do. As I go further down, my, my scribbles or my, my branches, they get a little bit longer. So I really have to stretch them. But I am making sure to press down hard because I want plenty of that pigment on the paper. When you're ready, you can add color number two. So pick any one of your other greens. So we started off with the dark one. Let's pick uh, maybe this one. This one's more of like a, a more foresty-ish green. And I'm going to sprinkle this color just randomly throughout this tree. So I'm gonna go over my branches. I'm gonna go under them, around them everything in between. Again, also pressing down hard. Probably stretch this out a bit. Now, this next color, color number three, is it three? No, technically color number four. Um, you can add a brown or you can add a blue to your picture. Um, I'll add a brown just so you can see what that looks like. All of these colors, um, if our, if our, our, our uh, watercolor pencils um, are working properly, they should mush together. So I'm gonna bring this closer to the spotlight. Now, moment of truth, you guys. I've just added a teensy little bit of brown to it. Now we wanna take our pointy brush. So you can use the same brush that you've been using for, for your moon, or you can um, choose a smaller brush if, that's more, if that makes you a little bit more comfortable. Take my clean water, clean brush, clean water, and I should be able to go right on top of it by scraping the color around, moving it using the same kind of brush strokes that I did before, but I'm really just kind of muddying it up a little bit. I'm running out of water, so I'm gonna refill. Really what you're doing is blending in those brush strokes. Now, is this working? Are they working to mush the colors together? Seems like they're working for us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. These are working. Woo. Maybe the moon okay. was just too wet. Yeah, I. that must have mm -hmm. been the case then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes me happy. Yeah. I'm so happy they're working. <laughs> I was like, I know they said watercolor pencil, I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is amazing. So you're gonna wanna do that for every single tree. 
it's it's really just repeat those same steps. So you will get a lot better at uh, doing these little, um, at making the shape of these trees. Definitely fluff them out closer to the bottom, make them a little bit um, thicker as they go further down. And you can even leave a little bit of space for extra color. See how I have plenty of space between um, uh, brush strokes. So I can add another color, I can add another green. So that green should be able to show up. You can vary it up a little bit and maybe one tree has more brown and another tree has a little more blue than the, than the one next to it. Nature is going to be different everywhere you go. You're gonna have variations of color every once in a while. I just love scribbling and muddying up these colors. I'm so happy it works for you. Now, I know that we are working our trees down here. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes or so. And then if anybody would like to share their work, we would love to see what you've created. These trees, we can keep working on them. You can keep adding them, adding to them. Um, so we want to, uh, just in case those of you guys need to leave a little bit early, um, we wanna be able to show your work to everybody if you wanna show it off. Yeah, we are not, uh, if you need to go to bed, if you need to do yeah. some self-care, we are not going to get in the middle of that. So um, if you don't want to share, you you can, you are more than welcome to go. If you would like to continue working, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to share, just holler at us, really. Yep. Yeah, those trees are really the last step. So you can have as many or as little trees as you want. In fact, if you want to add trees in between, um, wait for it to dry first. Wait for it to completely dry, and then you can add another tree on top of that. Does anyone have any questions for me? Can I ask you? Um, yeah. How are you getting? It's because you have a light and darker green that when you when you when you put the when you put the water on, they kind of blend, and you get that real deep and yet lighter tone. Huh? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, whenever I add the water to it, uh -huh. um, I try not to scrub so much. Um, I've, I've, let me show you an example. Let me add a few more colors to this tree and I wanna show you exactly how I'm doing that. Okay. Let me add, I can't can't find the the original color I was using. I swear I'm constantly like putting stuff down and losing it over Hannah, and over these, again. Yes. Hannah, the, the watercolor pencils are like triangular. Can we use a regular? Not that I've broken any yet, mm -hmm. but can we use yeah. a regular pencil sharpener to sharpen them? Oh yes, you can. Yeah, and in fact, um, the ones that I'm using are also a little bit triangular. If you can see that. So yes, a regular sharpener will work. Okay, so I want to show you exactly how I'm mixing the, the colors together. I try not to scrub too much and I try not to um, stay in one spot for too many brush strokes okay. because doing that will allow it to, uh, to mix a little bit too much. So I'm moving it from the bottom using the same kind of direction mm -hmm. and then scrubbing and going, scrubbing and going. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm not really lingering too long on one section. Scrubbing and going, scrubbing and going. And I'm always moving my brush in the same direction. So it's, it's moving downward. And I'm also not really pressing down as hard because 
um, the more I, the, the harder I press down, um, the more it's going to squish into the, the, the tree. So here's an example. Wow. Those look so, like real trees. <laughs> thank you. There we go. So try to press down very lightly when I can. I don't know how well you can see this, but my my paintbrush is angled upward. Do you oh. see that? It's angled upward, but I'm moving downward. It also looks like you've done this once or twice before. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, or many times. <laughs> so don't don't be too hard on yourself. You guys got this. And I'm gonna hit it soon. Yeah. Can we see your work? It's hot. It's difficult to see. Um, I don't. I don't know how to change my screen back to oh. you know full view in order oh. to. But I, I see think you guys again. I see you. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. we can't. We can see oh. it, and I'm loving that color so much. Ooh. That is moon. Uh huh. Great. Tony, that's that, great. Yeah, that that's texture on your moon. Yeah, yeah, of course. More like a moon than mine. Great job, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for sharing, Thanks, Tony. Guys. Love the colors. Great night. Have a great Good Thanks night. Thanks to all the veterans. Those are nice. Yes, yes. Good Thank night. You. Absolutely. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. So I'm gutsy enough to show you my Oreo cookie. Yeah, we'd love to <laughs> But see my trees it. are a little bit better than my Oreo cookie. Oh, oh my God. Oh, those That's are nice. beautiful. There it is. The colors are so lovely. Like I'm loving uh, the, the color blends that I'm seeing in the sky. And I'm yeah. loving the, the trees and everything. Okay. It blends nice, yeah. <laughs> It no, does. Great job. That's beautiful. I, I feel the gardening museum is ready to call me to. <laughs> nice. <to> <laughs> nice. Thank you so much, great Bill. Job. Thanks for sharing, Bill. Love it. Oh, Marcy, I see you, Marcy. Let's see if we can put you up. There we go. That's see, that's lovely. And I, I see what you did with the uh the yellow. Yeah, yeah, the yellow, yellow has a helps. beautiful glow to it. It a beautiful does. Glow. Yep. Trying to mm -hmm. get, yeah, trying to remedy it. And I love the angle of your trees. Like I feel like your the angle of your trees really does make it seem like you're looking upwards. Well, I cut. I kind of took it from from your example. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know. You, you did know? it way better. <laughs> you did it way better. I love it. <laughs> yeah, your colors are beautiful, and and I love how your your moon just glows. Yep. Yeah. I, that's so pretty, Marcy. Great job. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Marcy. Thank you guys for doing this. Oh, of, of course. course. We're so glad to have you here. Of course. Yes. Yeah, so anybody, know all these veterans. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, we're we're seeing a lot of new faces, and we're just happy to be able to do this for you guys. Yes. <laughs> well, here is Steve's. Thanks. Mine didn't turn out too well. We're on our way. I like Steve. Yeah. Oh, here you are, Christy. Here you are. Beautiful. Oh that wow! Is. I love that. Look how dark Whoa. that is. I love it. That's the. I night. like the dark. Yeah, yeah, I I love the contrast. And I'll show you mine. That's a beautiful <laughs> night sky. Yeah. yeah and then there we go. Yeah. Oh wow. I love your colors. Yeah. My I know favorite. the colors and the swipes are so nice. Just the way you you handled the brush strokes. Yeah, I, I yes. definitely need to go back and add the trees. Oh, but yeah. I would. I got discouraged with my moon. <laughs> so, oh, your moon! Your moon's beautiful. I know it is. It is yeah. beautiful, and I'm it's seeing great. some green in there. And I love the fact that I'm seeing those colors. 
I, I feel like the little bit of green really makes the moon stand out compared to mm -hmm. the colors that you had. It's just, it works so well. You did a great job, mm -hmm. Christy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you I did beautifully. It on the video and it looks better on the video <laughs> than it does in person. <laughs> Take a but picture. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, have to add some trees. Um, yeah. I just got discouraged with my moon. But yeah, oh, these I, are look at that. I love that. Yeah, they still yeah. they still look so beautiful though. They do. Yeah. Great job yeah. by both you, Christy and Steve. We're really proud of you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I, I, love, I, love I, love it's it's dark. I love this. It is. He's mm -hmm. like, it's too dark for me to add trees. So I'm like, it doesn't matter. It looks really cool. Oh, I, it's, I love it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. trees are in the dark too, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then he's got <laughs> the stars. Maybe just black or something. I, I think it would look really cool with the trees there, like because because like yeah. like you said, Brandy, trees are in the dark too. So even maybe if just black just ones, to, like a shadow. Yeah, like a yeah. silhouette. Yeah. Oh, uh, Jenny uh, is wanting to show. Thank you so much, Christy. Hey. And Steve. Thanks, Christy. Oh, Thank that's you. beautiful. Wow. There we go, Jenny. I love that. Those colors are really nice. <laughs> oh, the, the orange. Oh, see, I like those trees. Thanks. I like those trees. Yeah. yeah. Because that's how you see trees like that at night. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. I love I love the fact that they're um, like the the red one. Um, it's more transparent. I just yeah. love the effect. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And the uh -huh. orange that was innovative. Uh huh. I love that. That was such a cool idea. Canada, <laughs> you guys. Did, oh my gosh, you guys did so great. And I love how different they turned out. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it the textures are so nice though. oh you guys did amazing <laughs> thanks that needs to go Thank up you. on the wall <laughs> yep yep maybe maybe <laughs> great Thank job for, Thank, you. Thank you for sharing great this job this is a great night oh, Thank you. You. have a good night thanks for everything guys. can anyone hear me now uh yeah, yeah. oh yeah oh, thank goodness i had to go out and come back in i'm wondering is anyone having problems with the with the colored pencils not fully working on it? Uh, yes, Carly. Mm -hmm. uh, we did earlier. If you look in the recording, Hannah kind of helped us troubleshoot some of that. Because I mean, I I was I've been here the whole time following along, and the colors. At least I don't know if it I, they go over the blue, but the purple they're not going over which is very weird. I wonder if it's like waxy or not, but oh. it's going Ooh. over the first part of the circles, you know, but not the outer ones. Interesting. It might need to dry a little bit more. Yeah. That could be it. Um, yeah. It could be some of the pigment in the purple might take a little bit longer. Okay, that makes sense. I started yeah. Yeah. with just the watercolor. Um, paint but now it looks too messy because I couldn't get it over mm. the the purple you know so I just mm -hmm. I was wondering if anyone else experienced it if it was just maybe user error I don't know huh no it's I don't think it's user error I would say maybe let it dry and then see if you can try it again um because what we're finding is that the watercolor pencils need to be worked on on a drier surface mm -hmm. um so I'm wondering if maybe when you went over it with the purple if maybe it just wasn't dry enough um it's possible but um I think that in order to um, fully figure it out maybe wait for it to dry maybe another 20 minutes 30 minutes or so and then mm -hmm. try it again okay and, and what I find out, found out because I I was trying to get more white in my moon. Uh -huh. Is that I wet the watercolor pencil and dabbed it in the moon that, you know, as white. And so uh, it, it, once I did that, it spread with the water that was down on it already. Oh, okay. So you put water on the pencil itself? Yes, just so because oh, okay. when I, if I dabbed it, I, my my moon was so wet 
that when I dabbed it, nothing would happen. It wasn't spreading. Hey, hey Hannah, real quick. We have gotcha. somebody who wants to share. Uh -huh. Hello, yeah, welcome. yeah, go ahead. Oh, wow. There we go. Yeah. Holly, I oh, see nice. you guys. Oh, hi. Hey, Justin, go first. Put yourself. Shush. Wow, Bless that's beautiful. You. Look at you. <laughs> oh, that's picturesque. I know. The colors I just... and that little bit Seriously. of, it's either orange or yellow. I'm not sure, but. Orange. Orange. That's yeah, beautiful. orange. Yeah. And the light you... green background. Yeah. Yeah, that is beautiful. I, I have to applaud anybody who uh, went and did some more brave colors. So it's so nice. Oh, and Holly, that's, that's super. Mm -hmm. Your moon, I love the yellow and the gold. Yeah, oh, the texture so is gorgeous. And I have to say, I'm loving the, the shape of your trees too, Holly. Thank you. Um, there's something about the trees there that just, it makes it seem more magical. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It yeah. seems it does. magical. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's so lovely. Uh Thank you. And then we have someone else who wants to hey, share. Sorry. Thank you for the class. It was amazing. Oh, Thank please. you guys for Thank joining for us. Coming. Okay, I'm nice. coming. I'm looking for you. I'm coming. Yes. I'm finding you here. We have we have lots of people. So yes. Just give me one second. There you are. There you are. I found you. <laughs> Yay. Oh nice. There we go. Oh wow. There's mine. Oh, oh that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh. Well, they do look better on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like dark purple. Oh, I love. Oh I love my that. gosh! Look at that one. The I love the brush strokes on that one, especially in the sky. I feel like that's a magical one too. Oh <laughs> my goodness! What a great job you nice. did! You should be so proud of yourself. That yeah, fun. that's so lovely. Thank what you guys. Job. Thank you for sharing. And then we have, I'm coming to find you, Laura. I am on my way. Yep. Yep. There you are, Laura. We see, there we go, Laura. All right. This is my niece, Emily's. Oh, She's Daddy. green. Oh, I love that oh, green. The green. Wow. There's the so green. She, with everything yeah. bright green. Love yep, it. I love that. I feel like, I feel like we're in a magical portal. I know. <laughs> and I'm into purple, so I really thought <laughs> on my purple. Nice. Oh, nice. It's beautiful. Oh, and your trees Just are so lush. The blending of that purple with the blue, it looks so beautiful. Those are like my two favorite colors. So yes. yeah, perfect. Like Me too. Yeah. Uh -huh. awesome. Worked out. You guys did so good. Beautiful, guys. Great job. Oh my gosh, Hannah, these are so good. I love this Me is knows. my favorite part. I just love <laughs> the um i'm ready okay okay i see you here you go let's go let's all go right jeanette. jeanette let's do it there's the oh pink. my gosh i love the pink oh i know yeah. look at that oh, and the trees <laughs> the and the movement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the green and yeah the green and the uh, pink became purple right when I was at <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and and I, lo I love that spot, though. Like, right where it blends with the pink and with the blue. I'm, I'm right. loving that spot. Oh, good point, Hannah. I see that now. That's that's really yep. cool. Yeah, and that's um, why I know it was going to be purple. And that's why I ended up adding purple down here. Nice. Yeah, that was a good choice. <laughs> Great job, I love Jeanette. it. Thank you. I um, have to. <laughs> Who's that? We heard somebody. We heard somebody. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I can, can go. go. Oh, oh, no. Well, you go first, and then I'll go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm not. Randy, done, I'm trying but... to find you. There you are. You'll see one of my nakedish trees, but um. <laughs> There they are. Oh, nice. There we go. Oh, my gosh. I love, I love the love colors. It. I love the colors you that great, you did in your, yes. mm -hmm, your trees. Um, mm -hmm. I love the, the brush strokes that you did, like around the, the ring of blue. Yeah, Thank like I love, the, I love seeing that blend right there. 
And I yeah, think it's the like greens or just or... you chose were yeah. so good. And good night. Yeah, good night. Was, <laughs> yeah. Good night. Somebody said good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone. This was wonderful. Great yeah. job. Hey, good night, Moon. Good night, Moon. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> I was thinking that too. <laughs> and then Mary Ann, I know you're next. Yes, Mary Ann's next. There oh, you oh, are. Wow. Look at your trees. Oh, they're so adorable. I love them. Well, thank you. I, I love that it, it feels a little trees. bit farther out, like you're laying in a mm-hmm. forest and you're looking up at the moon. Mm-hmm. That's, that is really cool. Yep, oh. yep. Well, and I love you. the brush strokes too. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like I'm learning something every time. So <laughs> thank you. I really enjoyed this. Oh, wonderful. You're welcome. We're so glad Thanks, to have Marianne. you. And, and then there's, there's my masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> Is that you, JP? Yes. Okay, my first JP. time. There you Thanks. go. <laughs> There we go. Oh, oh wow, yeah. I love the perspective. I made a little l- lunar eclipse thing there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. And it's like clouds wow. and mist in the sky. I, I know. Wow, that. you look fancy. And uh, I applaud oh, you I so much for adding those on your own. You made it your own. Yeah. You did awesome. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me the the de-stressor of this believe me it's our pleasure thank you so yeah. much for I, I, want have, I want to have the boss help help next week or whenever you do it again oh perfect wonderful we'd love to have you back great job you should be so thank proud of you. yourself you did incredible mm-hmm. thanks for joining us thanks okay i know y'all did so Andrea. good i'm oh oh my god are you gonna do this again we are yes so we are going to do this again we actually have art classes once a month anyways and we will be having another veterans appreciation art class i believe in october hannah and we already have the project yes we don't have a yes we don't have a date just yet but we do kind of know when it's going to be and you will of course be one of the first to know sergio Mm -hmm. i saw you had it up there we go, Sergio. I see it. Oh. There we see that blending is really good. And it's so light. And your yes, moon, yeah. your moon, you have the spots on your moon. I, I love the, the the subtle transitions of color that I'm seeing. So you have the purple on one side, and it's much darker on one side of the moon, but it's it very subtly moves um, to the lighter part. Um, and I, I love the way you did that. And especially the, the gradient on right. the rings of the moon. That's nice too. A lot of water. Kept adding water. Yeah, you did, a lot you of did water. phenomenal. Yep. Water. Just the different shades of purple. You did great. Mm-hmm. Great job, Sergio. Yep. Thanks for joining us. And then uh, Faye's iPad. I love it. I saw that you were wanting to show. Or are you not ready yeah. just yet? I'll come back to you. Andrea, I know you wanted to share. There we go. Andrea, look at your trees. Oh, I love, <laughs> I love your the trees. trees. I love the trees too. But the yeah, moon Phil too. got a, a, a phone call. She had to leave, but this is as far as she had gotten. So she, oh my she gosh. I too. love the way that doing the trees, oh, that's oh, going to turn like out the... so amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love the it, I love the fact that it gives it some more perspective. Yes. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. Oh, I love it. As always, ladies, thank you so much. Always oh, so thank much fun. You. Thank y'all you, have Andrea. A wonderful night. You, thank too. you too. Night, y'all. And Christy and oh, Steve, good. this will be on Anne Can's YouTube page, but even better, you're gonna get a follow-up email. And um, you will get the link there as well. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. There oh, we go. Your moon. Oh, the moon. Look at that moon. I'm and loving your the texture. Of your trees. Mm-hmm. 
I'm loving the texture, but I also love that little bit of yellow that you have right there in the middle of the moon. There's something about it that makes it seem like it's glowing more. Yeah. Oh, and that's, good I think eye, that's Anna. my favorite part of the moon. Yeah, it's just, it's so subtle, but it does so much it to it. It up, doesn't it? Uh huh. Yeah, oh, it I brightens it up. Uh huh. Uh, I also really love, really have to point out the um, uh, the fact that you were able to blend your colors so well on the, the outside, mm -hmm. um, like the purple to going to the blue and all the way around. I'm loving that. <laughs> Thank Great you for job. sharing with us. And I love just the movement of your trees. It feels like there's a nice yeah. gentle cooling breeze, which we would appreciate mm -hmm. here in Texas. So that's what I'm going to be imagining. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Ring. Did anybody yeah. else want to share that I didn't get to? You can shout out um, if I missed you. Just I let can Fred, I see, yeah, uh, yeah, I see Fred, and okay, but I know Fred. I heard somebody. Oh my gosh! Fred. There we go. Look at the layers of the, the color trees. you did in the sky. I know. Like I'm oh loving the layers of colors, but there's something about the the texture of the tree branches that really sticks out to me. Like it's the shape of the trees too. Um, but I love your moon. Like and that your moon, moon and those is so realistic. Uh-huh. Oh, let's see. Yeah. So you did really well, Fred. Thanks. This was fun. Yeah, oh, I'm awesome. glad you enjoyed. Thanks, Fred. And Carly, was that you who wanted to show? Yeah, I I went over my moon because I didn't like the moon. So I went over it. So now that's all wet again. Yeah. I made it darker because I didn't like the color. I think I'm going to still work on it. But oh the there trees we go. are with watercolor because my pencils weren't working with it. Okay. That's honestly a very good um, way to do it. Um, I'm loving the fact that you did. Is that pink that I see on the outside? Yeah, but I don't know how I made it. <laughs> My colors were very different. And then I went over them again just because I wanted to change it. So I think I like it better now than before. Well, I had to, I have to point out the way the pink looks in between the trees. I think that's my favorite part. Like really? they, yeah, they stand out so much, but in such a good way. Oh, thank um, you. If there's something about like it, it, it lends itself to the, the shape and I don't know. I just love the contrast. Yeah. It, it so really fun. makes the trees stand uh -huh. out and like, Ooh, those are nice trees. And I think like, if they, I they pop such a good shade of green uh -huh. it just you've got to show those trees off that's my opinion <laughs> yep yep <laughs> thank you I didn't take a picture of it before I went over this part so I honestly it was much lighter but I like the contrast more I think mm -hmm. yeah this it's was working well favorite. for you this was my favorite class that I have done oh wonderful uh, we're so glad I've, to I've hear done that. a handful of them and this one was my probably nice. my favorite well that I was the most proud of, even though I'm not so proud of it. You know, the others look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, Carly. Yeah, thank you so, so, so much. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, Carly. And then I just want to give a final opportunity. I didn't know if anyone else wanted to share or if you had any additional questions before we leave you for the night. And of course, you never have to share. That's never required. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a dumb question, Hannah. Go ahead. Who's speaking? This is JP. Oh, do I hi. need the, do I need the watercolors? Should I dry these before I put the thing back on? Or oh, you mean like, um on on top of the the lid? Yeah, exactly like, like that. I I would let them dry for a couple more minutes. Oh. Maybe like ten more minutes. Um, okay. or you can just it wipe it clean. Dry. Yeah. You oh, can okay. wipe it clean too. Yeah, um, I oh, would. Uh, and then what just, about the paints? The paints have some water. Should I da dog oh, those? I'm sorry oh, to no. ask all these novice questions, but oh you're no, fine. no, you are asking great questions. <laughs> I, I'm I'm full of dumb questions. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, you're great. Um, these are important questions. Valid questions. Okay, so for the lid, um, if 
if I had been thinking ahead of time, I would have wiped them clean. So you can certainly do that and take off all the excess water. Um, as for the, the actual paints themselves, you don't have to wait for them to dry. You can just close it. As long as you're not rattling it around, it, it around you're fine. Don't go on a roller coaster. Like, okay. if, if you're just going to go to bed, no. you are okay. It'll mess but... my vertigo up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. No, you're welcome. You're so very, welcome. Very good questions. I really appreciate this class. Thank you so much, you guys. Good. Thank you, Jeanette. I look forward to testing my creativity once a month. <laughs> <laughs> And just to, just, just to repeat again, we do have a regular um, monthly art class. Mm -hmm. We don't really send out any, any uh, uh, supplies for those. Um, however, I do tend to use very easy to, easy to, to buy, easy to find art supplies. So you're not having to spend a million dollars on um, your art supplies. So it's all gonna be very affordable. Um, yes, watercolors. Um, we off sometimes we do oil pastels, but you can find yeah. those very cheaply. Uh, acrylic also, paints. Hannah, but I always use the cheap ones. So. Yes, we. Mm -hmm. You always can email us and ask yes. us to provide a list. We've been able to get stuff from the dollar store. We even mm -hmm. have used soy sauce. We have used pencils. We've used anything. And plus, you can actually <laughs> use the art supplies that you have here yes. to create most of the projects mm -hmm. we do. If you just tell us ahead of time what you need, we are so happy to accommodate you. And um, you will be getting that information about our art classes and you can get on the list of finding out uh, once a month when we do them. And I also, Hannah, real quick, I want to once again thank um, my advanced sciences and Myriad Genetics for graciously mm -hmm. providing the grant funding for us to send out these supplies to these incredible people. Um, thank Big thank you to them. And then also just two housekeeping things. Uh, this recording will likely be up tomorrow. So if you're already ready to create another moon with a different color palette, feel free to go for it. And you will be getting, it will be on the ANCAN YouTube page, but we also will be sending you a link to the recording if you signed up for this class. So you're not gonna miss a thing. Secondly, we oh. do have the ANCAN Art Gallery. Um, and we would absolutely love to put your art up there. We have so many people who love to just stop by and look at your creations. If you are interested in that, please feel free to email me, alexa at ancan.org, which will be in one of the emails that Hannah sends, or you can email it directly to Hannah too. Mm -hmm. You got it. So Hannah, Hannah remember this yeah. one? Yeah. Yes. So I made this one. Oh. Oh. oh that's so nice. I'm going to make another one. I can hang the three on the wall. Yeah. So, oh, you know. Oh, so they connect. Yeah. It's oil. It. The one, and then I bought this at Walmart. Like, oh. look at very cheap. You know, lots of colors there. And I've had years and years. I have the brushes. I just have to go to Michael's, make myself some paper. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Because I'm in class, and that was the final product with the trees and stuff. It's oh. a fun. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. But you inspired me to create something else. So I love that. That's so good, no, Marcy. And I love the idea. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. So Hannah, I think we're going to end the recording here. Is there anything else that you need to add? No, I'm good. I just have to thank you all for, for joining us. And th thank you again um, to our veterans for serving. Um, yeah, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank, thank you, you so much. Have a Good summer. Thank you, everybody. Have nice. a good